Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Taryn Kalmer about utilizing virtual corporate wellness initiatives to support remote employees. Taryn Kalmer, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here, John. It's a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Mexico today, nice and hot where you're at. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. It's also hot here. Uh, we are actually expecting a bunch of thunderstorms today, which should cool things down a little bit. And mm-hmm. I always love a good summer thunderstorm. So that'll be fun. Uh, it's yeah. a pleasure to be with you, Taryn. And I'm excited to have a nice conversation around utilizing virtual corporate wellness initiatives to support remote employees. Now, of course, during this pandemic, so many organizations have had to pivot quickly, move towards more virtual work, um, distributed teams. Now, many organizations are pulling people back in, either completely or perhaps in some sort of a hybrid format, but many organizations are maintaining at least portions of their remote teams. That brings with it a whole bunch of benefits and opportunities, but it also has some challenges. And and we're going to unpack this a little bit, but you know, just by way of introduction, some of that challenge is how do you protect the health, the mental health, the physical health and wellness of your people when you're not together in a physical office space? If you have a a distributed team um, where you never are actually together, how do you pay attention to it? Right. How do you, how do you encourage it? How do you support it? Uh, And so looking at virtual corporate wellness options, I think is a really important thing in this day and age, because I I think remote work is going to continue. And in fact, I I think it'll probably continue to increase. We kind of like those pendulum swung during the pandemic. It's kind of swung back a little bit as we've been emerging from it. But I think it'll continue in the in the coming years to move towards more and more contingent, more and more uh, distributed, more and more remote kinds of work arrangements for at least a good segment of the labor force. 100%. 100%. Couldn't agree yeah. more. Yeah. All right. As we get started, I wanted to share Taryn's bio with everybody. Taryn is a South African-American CEO and founder of the world's first virtual corporate wellness company, Remote Team Wellness. After 10 years of teaching yoga and mindfulness, leading team retreats and consulting, she founded Remote Team Wellness to support the thousands of companies shifting to virtual team wellness events with services spanning from virtual corporate wellness initiatives to in-person team retreats, remote team wellness has customizable and comprehensive solutions for every team. To date, the company has clients like Meta, Dell, L'Oreal, Netflix, and many more. Taryn is also a dynamic keynote speaker on modern employee benefits and workplace wellness in a remote era. Fantastic to be with you. Anything else that you would like to share with me or my listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? No, John, I think I'm going to get you to do all my intros. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, very impressive. And you're doing some great stuff. So let's dive right on in. Tell us just a little bit about the origins of remote team wellness, because I'm always interested in that that kind of a development and story. And then we can get into specifically uh, more about how we can utilize that. Well, the types of remote corporate wellness initiatives that are possible and how we might be able to utilize those better. 100%. So, um, it's so actually a funny story about the origin of remote team wellness. So the, the pandemic happened obviously, um, in like, well, the pandemic 
at the height of it in March 2020 happened and I was in South Africa working with a hotel group at the time. So I was actually planning on doing a bit of a tour of South America and unfortunately travel was just completely off of the table. The borders shut down in South Africa and I was stuck there for um for 10 months and in that process i was also separated from my my partner who was in the states so we had no way to be together um and we just kept having these really strained zoom conversations that were kind of unhopeful and getting really sad and depressing around around when we're going to see each other if we're ever going to see each other if the world was ever going to open up and i decided that it would be a really good idea to kind of mitigate some of that stress by leading him on virtual meditations he's a 15 year startup marketer um and grow and growth growth hacker so he was really taking a hit in his business and he was struggling with a lot of you know anxiety around what's going to happen next so i started leading him on these virtual meditations um and he was like this is actually he really helpful and really supportive um can i invite a few of my 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 founder friends and so he invited a few founders to those weekly meditations that i was doing for him um and then they started asking if they could invite more people invite their team members and asking me to put together could you maybe do like a stress management session for our team and it was actually just a very organic way of starting to just provide those resources that were not being met through employee well, wellness programs that were you know standing um and it was really uh, providing that human element as well and i saw that huge opportunity and that huge gap in the corporate wellness market to actually provide those supportive resources for employees because obviously just like you were saying how do you actually bridge that gap and make sure that there are those there are those support structures in place and i think the answer to that is by making it a priority and actually realizing that it's important and there does need to be that support so that's how we started <laughs> Well, yeah, that's that's super interesting and and kudos to you for being attentive, uh, you know, and observing that need, that gap and then being able to to work towards filling it. Uh that's important. And yeah, the the pandemic really put a spotlight on wellness and mental health issues in addition to the physical health. Obviously, there's a lot of concern about COVID, um but very quickly reports started coming out about, you know, the increases in anxiety, depression, things like yeah. domestic abuse, you know, those sorts of things. Like it's it was hard. It was a hard transition for people. Uh and let's not forget, I mean, that was a tumultuous time not just because of COVID, but the George Floyd moment and like a lot of social unrest, political unrest, like a lot of stuff all happening all at the exact same time. Uh and it was just a really hard time. And so organizations, you know, many organizations really stepped up to the plate and they knew we need to, you know, look out for our people. We need to figure out how to do it though when we're never even together. and hence now you know you have these types of offerings so i think that's fantastic yeah yeah definitely it's it's a really it's really wonderful to be a part of that movement and i mean just like you're saying the mental health aspect of what's happened from the pandemic is almost a pandemic in itself and that's something that we need to address it a lot on a larger scale for sure and definitely needs more attention yeah. and air time Yeah. And so you already started to tease a little bit about some of the types of things you were doing as you were mm-hmm. organically kind of spinning this up. Um but why don't you lay out for us, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be just your your um company, but you know, what you're doing but what you see people doing in this space that you think is helpful and useful and things that we should be thinking more about in terms of utilizing to help with the wellness of our people virtually. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think something that I've seen a lot of and that something that I really respect companies doing is just making the time to have a a gathering, to have something that's not just a work meeting, not just a Zoom meeting. It's something where people actually have the space to share how they're feeling, to air how they're feeling, to actually have that resource of what's going on it on a on a personal but also professional level because those things are so deeply interlinked and i think that's also something that the pandemic really highlighted um and really spotlighted for a lot of organizations that there is no real compartmentalization and separation that can happen when there is something as 
grand and large scale and unprecedented as what we've been going through for the last two years. There has to be that integration and that speaking to both sides of the experience because it's all just a part of the human experience. Um, and really just adding in those little elements of human connection is something I've really been, I've really, really been impressed, impressed with in a lot of organizations and in some organizations, not so much. Um, so there are some really amazing tools that I've seen kind of come out of this time, you know, different kinds of like conversational prompts for, for Slack channels, um, different, you know, nudges to get up and take a drink of water to go and go and move your body. Those things are absolutely fantastic. And I think having those integrations is a fantastic way to just show people that you, that are working in your organization that you care, that you care about them on that human level rather than just, you know, going through the motions of, of yeah, we have, a, we have a EAP and we have a cessation program. You're good, you know. So really having those organizations prioritize that connection element has been one of the most, um, the most amazing things to see throughout this. Yeah, and, and not just not just saying the right things, but really backing it up with what you do, I think right. really matters. And I remember this isn't specifically in relation to some of the different types of wellness initiatives that you were just describing, but it does relate to this just attentiveness to and a focus on the wellness of your people. Uh, and, you know, really what we've seen is the need for greater levels of empathy from leaders uh, during this time. I mean, that was always an important leadership characteristic. But I think um, now, after two years of of a pandemic, uh, people who maybe were considering that more of like the soft, fluffy side that maybe wasn't as important. I think you know most people are realizing, oh, that really actually is very, very important. And I and I think back to the early days of the pandemic. And I'm a professor, um, in addition to doing consulting work and those sorts of things. And so uh, when the pandemic hit, like many organizations, we at the university we had to switch on the dime. And it happened literally as we were going into spring break. And so the decision was made. We're, we're closing down for like two days, you know, before spring break. And then when it, students come back from spring break, everything's going to be virtual. So all classes, everything is going to be online. Um, now we had some online classes before the pandemic, but it was, it was probably like an 80, 20 split, 88, 80 face to face, 20 online. Now it was hundred percent online. Many faculty who had never taught an online class, their course was not developed to be an online class. And literally in, within a week, um, everyone had to kind of figure out how to do it and to, to make it a meaningful experience for, for students. And so it was a heavy lift and it was, it was like it was for many organizations do, going through similar transitions. And I was in a meeting with uh, uh, an associate provost, kind of a high level executive at the university. And we were, you know, there were a lot of pressing matters, a big, a long agenda, things that needed to be addressed. And I was just so impressed. This is just like a week in, maybe two weeks in at, at most. Um, and I was just so impressed by her willingness to just acknowledge the challenges everyone was facing. So as the meeting starts, she just opens it up by saying, there's a lot of pressing stuff. We got a long agenda. There's a lot of stuff we're going to have to try to get through. Um, but how are you doing? And just acknowledging what everyone yeah. was going through. Um, and then she said, you know what? We'll get to the agenda, but why don't we just take some time and just go around the room? And I just want to give people a chance to share you know, what some of the challenges are that they're facing. Maybe there's something we can do to help each other. And so we took the first, I don't know, quarter of the meeting to do that. And it was the first time, you know, I'd been in a whole bunch of meetings up to that point and they were all just like urgent and, and fast paced. And like, we just got to get stuff done. And this was the first time that someone had actually taken a moment to say, okay, everyone's struggling. (laughs) Everyone's tired. Uh, Everyone has stress and anxiety around this thing. Um, let's figure out how we can be supportive of each other. And that meant a lot that, I mean, there, there had been messaging around, we want to support you. We want, you know, take, uh, practice self-care, uh, those sorts of things. There'd been messaging and, and, and things said along those lines, but up to that point, nobody had actually done anything to really Absolutely. demonstrate it. Right. And so that, that just makes a huge, huge difference. I remember that was super impactful to me at the time. Yeah, how amazing. And yeah, very, it, it's so, it's so amazing to have that shared experience too. And really just to speak to that, because that's to, to try and push it under the rug and pretend that nothing was happening. That's, that was kind of a disturbing part of, of the pandemic as well, uh, to see the, the, the companies, organizations, brands that were trying to just 
brush over it like it wasn't happening. But I think those are really the the people that brought it to a, a different level because we were all experiencing the same thing in completely different ways. Um, and so I think having those moments to just share that connected human experience is, was such an it, it is still such an opportunity to deepen that team bond, deepen that connection within the organization too. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's talk more specifics now. Um, what are some of like the really cool things that we can do? Uh, you know, you, you create spaces for connection, uh, opportunities for connection. You, you have empathy and compassion and you, you share and you try to create a safe space where people can share and be open. Um, all that kind of stuff is important. What are some of the specific types of initiatives that we can start to implement that are really kind of fun and innovative and exciting that can engage our people and get them to, to create patterns, you know, and habits around their wellness. Mm, Yeah, really great question. So in terms of in terms of things that you can literally just do as an organization, one thing that I love are micro nudges. And there's heaps of data and science around the effectiveness of nudges. And these are basically just small, um, small, small, like tasks to give to your employees throughout the day. So this is something that is very easily implementable to literally just schedule an email that says, hey, why don't you get up and move your body? Why don't you get up and listen to your favorite song for the next three minutes and have a little dance party in your kitchen. Why don't you go and grab a glass of water? These are things that, again, can really just shift a person from I'm completely locked into working and completely locked into my screen and not really connecting my head to my body um, to actually just get them back into that space of, okay, well, I need to be taking care of myself while I am in this remote space because there is a tendency to obviously, you know, really overwork and 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 stay online way longer than than maybe we would have before the pandemic happened while we were still working in the office when there was that very clear uh, defined line of this is something that I actually need to separate myself self from or I'm moving away from the space where I work now we have our work in our home space and for for a lot of us uh, we we have made those adjustments to make sure that that is a utilize uh, an optimized environment um however some of us really have have trouble with actually separating those two things so again to have the organization giving you those little micro nudges throughout the day like these are the things that you actually can do to keep yourself well while you are working and making sure that you are being conscious of how much you are how much time you are spending with your screen how much time you're spending online is really important. Um, another amazing thing that, that companies can do for their teams is just to schedule, again, schedule time that's not just a Zoom meeting. So something that can be a little bit more interactive, something where people can get to know each other, whether it's like a mingle bingo event, which can just be like having people break off into different breakout rooms to talk about to, to find the person that has done something similar to them or um, or maybe just to have a, a conversation with someone different in the organization and having kind of like a, a speed conversation exchange. Those are also also things that can really help to build those deeper team bonds and connections for people who have been virtually onboarded and really haven't had time to connect with the team on a deeper level. So carving out the time and making those spaces throughout the throughout the the quarter to actually connect I think is a really really huge opportunity and whether you have a a planner or a a wellness company do that for you or it's just an initiative that you take on yourself I think it is absolutely imperative that this it is made a priority and that just even just even that little bit of like taking the initiative to make that priority for the four people it really shows a lot to to employees because obviously they were also in this this space of um, everyone's been calling it the great resignation. However, I really think it is a great contemplation. Like it's really a time to actually think of like what what am I doing and is what I'm doing tied to my value system? And it's kind of the first time that a lot of people have had that line of questioning and actually gone to that place in themselves where they thought, is this something that actually aligns with me? Is, some, is this something that I want to be doing? And it's really important that organizations realize that, that is the shift that's happening and and re- and really fall into that that alignment process because there is there 
there is going to be a huge amount of people that won't just won't take jobs because of the because of the fact that it doesn't necessarily align with their values. Uh, so I think that again, making making the time for those kinds of activities is such an important part of setting up a well-being initiative, setting up a well-being program. Also, even just utilizing su- super simple tools like doing different breathing practices. I found our breathing sessions to be some of the most profound and really, really amazing sessions for organizations because it really, again, takes people from a space of being in their heads and being so, you know, worried about the future in another moment all over the place to just coming back to their bodies, coming back to themselves and then having this understanding that, oh, wow, I can access this space anytime and I can actually just learn how to take a few deep breaths and that actually helps me to build a deeper resilience in the times when it is a little bit more challenging or I do have harder decisions to make. I think that's a that's a, a fantastic shift to just make in general, to even just start, uh, start out a meeting with a, a wellness practice. Start out a meeting with, let's all just take a deep breath together. Let's take a few deep breaths together. And then we can begin because then we're beginning from a place of clarity and we're beginning from a place of focus and calm rather than being in this fight, flight, freeze, fall and response that we are all, we are all, um, you know, in and we're, we're all exper- we've all experienced in some way, shape or form in the last few years. So really doing things to shift ourselves back to that very calm homeostatic state that's a amazing opportunity to actually come into a deeper level of awareness yeah i love the tip on just on on the mindfulness practices of some meditation deep breathing i mean it can be very simple things and it doesn't need to take lots of time it doesn't need to be very expensive um so anything from like those simple types of practices up to you know think about what you did when you were together uh, physically with your team mm-hmm. and you would do team building things. Um, and in fact, I'm back together with my team at the university. And just yesterday we had a retreat um, and we we took 90 minutes in the afternoon to, a, to go to a local pottery place where we got lessons on um, doing a pottery wheel, you know, doing stuff on Amazing. a pottery wheel. And, and it was just fun. fun. Like it didn't, it didn't connect to anything really, but it was team building and, and just yeah. interactive. And, and we just got to know each other you know, a little bit, those sorts of things. So anyway, that's just an example of like things. We all have done those things before and we did those things when we were together physically. So then the question is, are there things like that we can do when we're not together physically, um, but still to have fun beyond just like getting together for a team's meeting or a, or a zoom meeting. And I'm thinking about the same team back in the height of the pandemic. I remember we did, we had a holiday gathering where we, uh, you know, we had, some stuff that we did that was work related. Then we just did like a cupcake design and everyone was at their homes. We just did a zoom thing. Actually we used teams and uh, we, we, we bought kits for everyone, sent them to their houses. And then we just like designed stuff and had like little competitions and it was just casual and fun. And so there are things you can do if you're just thoughtful about it and try to be a little bit creative um, and usually pretty low cost. So uh, I would definitely encourage listeners to think about what you can do for your virtual teams as you're trying to support them and encourage, you know, their, their, their self-care, their, their mental and physical wellness. Well, Taryn, it has been a pleasure. I know at the time I'm going to have to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Amazing. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Um, if you want to find me, I am, uh, well, if, on, on all social medias, you can find Remote Team Wellness at Remote Team Wellness or visit our website, remoteteamwellness.com. If you want to connect with me personally, I am Taryn Kalmer, T A R I N C A L M E Y E R, on all social medias. Um, and just a final word and a kind of final thought that I really love to leave with people is just to really make sure that every single day, in some way, in some moment, that you are taking time to check in with yourself because awareness is the first step to any wellness journey. So becoming aware of how you're feeling, how you're doing, how you're breathing is such an important and vital practice that can really shift and transform so much in your life. And it's super simple. 
So just by even just taking time, maybe even, even a few minutes before you wake up, before you grab your cell phone, before you check in with the rest of the world, I just encourage you to check in with yourself. And that practice will completely multiply and take you to completely different places because it really shows that you care about you and then you can care about everyone else. So that's my little practice and I hope you stay well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Taryn. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Taryn can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe. They can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. If you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Discover the unparalleled beauty of Kanab, Utah, the heart of the parks, and the ultimate base camp for your national park adventures. Kanab, Utah offers easy access to not one, not two, but three of America's most iconic national parks. Explore the majestic Grand Canyon, hike the stunning trails of Zion, and witness the awe-inspiring landscapes of Bryce Canyon. All just a stone's throw away from Kanab. But Kanab is more than just a gateway. Locals call it the Little Hollywood. It's a charming town with a vibrant community. So whether you're an outdoor enthusiast, a nature lover, or a curious traveler, Kanab welcomes you to make unforgettable memories in the heart of the parks. Plan your journey to Kanab today at visitkanabutah.com. Your gateway to endless adventures starts here.